Some think Tim DeChristopher committed a crime and should be punished. Others think breaking the law was the right thing to do. This University of Utah student, whose only previous brush with the law consisted of two speeding tickets, hardly seems like someone who would purposely break the law. But here he is facing prison time for committing a felony deliberately. Jail is certainly a scary thing, but I've been scared for my future for a long time. Um, I think the, the scariest thing for my whole generation is that we stay on the path that we're on right now. Jail is not nearly as, as scary as uh, dealing with the, the real consequences of climate change that we're expected to see in my lifetime. The Christopher is a devoted environmentalist, has been since he was a kid. He's especially worried about what man is doing to hasten global warming. He was moved to tears after speaking with noted Stanford University environmentalist Terry Root at a conference a few months ago. And she said, there were things we could have done in the 80s and things we could have done in the 90s, but I'm sorry, I think it's too late. It, it shook me to the core. I literally went outside the, the hotel where the conference was being held and I just cried. And, um, and I went through uh, a very uh, period, a period of really deep despair um, where it was almost like I was mourning for my future. And I was mourning for, for the future of all of us. For one thing, he was convinced that the Bush administration was auctioning off too much of the West to drilling companies. So when he heard the Bureau of Land Management, the BLM, was conducting an auction in December of last year, offering leases for over 350,000 acres of public land in Utah, some of it in pristine Red Rock country, he decided to attend, expecting to disrupt the auction and then get kicked out. And instead, I went inside, and uh, as soon as I got inside the door, an official said, Hi, are you here for the auction? And I said, Yes, I am. And she said, Are you here as a bidder? And I said, Well, yes, I am. Dressed like a student and carrying a backpack, Christopher started bidding simply to drive up the prices. But before long, he was winning bids. Uh, I figured I would probably go to prison. Um, and so I had to to ask myself if I could live with that. But on the other hand, seeing this opportunity to protect some of this land and keep some of this oil in the ground and give us a better chance for a livable future, uh, if I turn my back on that opportunity, can I live with that? And I thought, no. He ended up winning bids on 13 lease parcels over 22,000 acres for about $1.7 million until the auction was abruptly stopped. And then uh, a BLM agent came straight over to me and showed his badge and said, let's go speak outside. And then what? Um, and then he asked me what my intentions were, uh, what, whether or not I intended to pay. And, and I told him very clearly that um, my intent was to disrupt the auction, that this was an act of civil disobedience. If you're charged with a federal felony, you're in serious trouble. The Christopher's attorney, Ron Yengich, acknowledges his client committed an act of civil disobedience. But because it's against federal law to bid without the intention or means of paying, his client is facing three to five years in prison. The idea that he is a good kid, he's not a nonviolent kid, uh, he did it, if, this, if not on the spur of the moment, he certainly did it because of a deep-seated belief that this country should be green. Right, I think he should be prosecuted, yes. Kathleen Skama is Director of Government Affairs for the Independent Petroleum Association. She says the industry has a good record when it comes to the environment, and the Christopher did wrong and should be punished. I don't think this rises to the level of a case where civil disobedience really is warranted. We reclaim the land. We are very protective of the environment with our activity, despite what you hear in the press and despite the rhetoric of environmental groups. So, um, unfortunately, in this case, I believe the, the, the perception that oil and gas is going to come in and destroy the land has caused this person, perhaps, to do something, to break the law. Civil disobedience is ethical because the law and morality are not always the same. David Keller is a professor of philosophy and director of the Center for the Study of Ethics at Utah Valley University. We have a responsibility to be civil disobedient where in situations where our complacency emboldens the power uh, and those laws which are unjust.
Pat Shea is a former director of the BLM and the Clinton administration and is also a lawyer defendant to Christopher. He says that Christopher's behavior may have been illegal, but it was patterned after the actions of some of the world's great leaders. Just as with Thoreau or Martin Luther King or Mahatma Gandhi, uh, he had this ability to look at the situation, deal with it in an existential way, and then come through with his actions on a principled manner. And uh, that's something that I think most people would love to see in their children uh, and maybe in themselves. Attorney Yengich says civil disobedience in and of itself is not a defense. But the primary defense would be what lawyers call the choice of evils defense. And that's a historic defense about someone who is basically protesting a government action and they're saying that I did this even though it may be technically against the law because there's a greater evil out there. One of the concerns expressed by critics was how near some of the leases were to national parks. In fact, national park officials were so concerned they had asked the BLM to delay the auction. Ten of the parcels to Christopher One were located near Arches National Park in southern Utah. Former BLM director Pat Shea. I think they were trying to push through in the final days of the Bush administration as many energy leases as they possibly could. So there were a number of commercial energy companies that had an interest to get as much as they could before the curtain came down and there was a new administration. These were pretty big companies. Kathleen Scamas Association represents many of those energy companies and she says they are performing a valuable service with little impact on the environment. In, in Utah, less than 1% of public lands, much less than 1% of public lands, is disturbed for oil and gas so that we can provide people heat for their homes. That's a basic human necessity. We can't go back to, to freezing in the dark or, or back to burning fire, you know, firewood in the fireplace or shoveling coal into, like we had to do 100 years ago. But certainly one of the benefits of civil disobedience is bringing attention and stimulating public discourse. In the case of Tim De Christopher, um, I, do, I do think that it is beneficial that we are having a discussion in Utah about whether he is a terrorist or or not, a saboteur, um, an exemplary citizen, a criminal, whether charges should be brought against him or not. All of this is healthy for a democracy. What makes civil disobedience ethically acceptable and when is it not? Um, I think when it's, when it's nonviolent, first off, um, and non-destructive is, is what makes it, is one of the things that makes it ethical. The Christopher says he would never think of destroying property or vandalizing equipment to stop actions he thinks are illegal. I don't think it's very effective either because things like, you know, spiking trees, you know, the only person that that affects is, is the logger um, and it can, it can kill a logger. Um, but it, it goes after, you know, the, the people at the bottom who are doing, doing their job and, and, you know, trying to make a living. And it doesn't go after the systems and the institutions that encourage that greed and encourage that short-sightedness. Attorney Yenge says that above all, civil disobedience must be done in a civil way. We got to be careful, and I guess this is why we say when we talk about doing acts of civil disobedience, that they've got to be done with respect for everyone. And, and maybe, maybe, if the government rules against you, then, then you have to take the punishment as part of the, the, process. the process, yeah. As of now, the Obama administration has withdrawn those leases offered in December. Now, Tim DeChristopher is waiting to find out how this will affect the case against him. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, I'm Lucky Severson reporting.